I don't believe this. On my last video, I was talking about how you always have to check on tractor tracks. And as I'm walking back there, I've just checked the tractor track, and there's a hair coming there. It was sat at the top, and then it started running towards me. Well, back out for a walk again, this time in a different direction. Okay, well the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check my settings on my camera. I know I'm coming up to this tree, I've no idea whether or not there's a, a little owl in there, but there's a chance there could be. I don't believe that. I've got the little owl, which is fantastic, but I don't believe this. On my last video, I was talking about how you always have to check on tractor tracks. And as I'm walking back there, I've just checked the tractor track, and there's a hair coming there. It was sat at the top, and then it started running towards me. As it started running towards me, obviously at some point it must have seen me, it stayed. But it stayed in just looking off to the off to the left, and it was. But the, the light's perfect for it. I think I've got an absolute cracker there. Well, how good was that? A space of five minutes, a little owl, and a hare. I get asked a lot on my images what settings have I used. Well, you know, for every hundred images, you've probably used a hundred different settings. So people think, well, how on earth can you remember all those settings for that certain picture? Well, the secret is you don't have to. What you do is you have your f-stop, your aperture, you've got your shutter speed, and you've got your ISO. So these three things there. Now your f-stop, which is your aperture, I would advise for wildlife photography that you set that as a starting point at 5.6. That's f5.6. The shutter speed you want to be at a minimum of 500th of a second. And your ISO, ideally, 400 ISO. Now that's something to start off with. I need to explain it in more detail so when I'm back in the office I'll show you all about the exposure triangle and hopefully that will reveal big secrets for you. As I'm sat here for a moment I've looked up into this tree. Like I said, you can't help it, you have to do it. And above me, I saw a long-tailed tit. Now the thing is with those, they're not usually solitary. So when you see one, there'll be a few. So if you hang about, you never know, the few will come together, they might come down lower, and you'll be able to get a shot. 
as I said before, one of the facets of wildlife photography is the fact that you get out into the countryside. I know we're only allowed out for an hour at the moment, but it's just a great place to be. It's good for the soul, good for the well-being, and if you get some wildlife pocking up, that's even better. You may have noticed that as I'm walking around now, I've got my camera with me today, but I'm doing everything handheld. Normally, that wouldn't happen. I'd be kitted out properly. And I actually walk around, if I'm walking around like this, I always have my camera on a monopod. Always. Just take a look at this. Absolutely breathtaking. And I've not got my wide-angled landscape lens with me because it's just an hour's walk. What a pity. Look at the light. The light is fantastic. Look at the depth of that woods. That is incredible. That is stunning. When you're in the middle of a woods, they're not the easiest places to photograph wildlife. So what you need to do is to bring them down from the canopy of the forest. You need to bring a bird feeder, put a few branches near the bird feeder, because they like to land on something before they go to the feeder, and that's a lot better shot. Don't take a shot with a bird feeder in. It doesn't make sense. It's not a great shot, that's not. But that's one thing you can do. Another challenge for shooting wildlife in a woods is the light. So you need to really choose your area to put a feeder up and to stake it out because the light is something that you're going to need. Yes, you can use a flash, but in all honesty, in the UK, a lot of the wildlife photographers, including myself, don't like to use flash. I know in other countries they use it a lot and they seem to be absolutely fine with it. You've really got to think about where you position your feeder because with the light, as it is at this moment, as I'm stood here, it's actually just in front of me up there. And if I was to put a feeder here and a bird landed on a perch, it would just get silhouetted. Now, yes, there are situations where it is nice to have a bird that's backlit, but in the main, if you want to take a nice photograph with a nice background, then you're going to have to have that light behind you. When you've done that, you'll find the shot will come out really nice. So now I've positioned myself with the light to my back going onto these trees. That will be perfect to put a feeder up, put a few branches up, and you'll get some stunning shots. So you've just got to look around. You'll find something. Well, sadly, that's my time up. I'm going to have to make my way back to the office now, but I'm going to have to do it through this fantastic blanket of white flowers in this wood. Magic. My name is Mark Blake. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit the like button and thanks for watching.